Okay, so let's review the Vata Pitta Kapha now. So Vata emotionally is unpredictable. Pitta, we're going to go into in a second. Kapha is very predictable. So but Vata's unpredictability emotion-wise is they run away. Right? So if you push them or you try to pin them down, right, they run away. And if you try to ask them what's wrong, they go, I don't know, I'm not in touch with that to think about it, I'm not sure. Well, maybe it's this. No, I think it's this. I don't know, maybe it's this, I, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm just, it's, I don't know, I'm not in touch with that. It's hard to say. Well, I could say this, but I might change my mind, I don't know. So Pitta, their emotions are also unpredictable. So he said Kapha emotion, very predictable and mild. Vata emotion, unpredictable, and if you try to pin them down, they run away. If you try to ask them what it is, they go, I don't know, I have to think about it, I'm not sure. But Pitta emotions, they're very unpredictable as well, but they're very intense. So they're super focused, they're related to anger. So Pitta emotions are sharp and intense. They're also unpredictable, meaning out of nowhere, suddenly the guy or the woman seems to get very angry. So getting angry all of a sudden. So we could say Pitta emotions are more acute. Acute. Acute means what? They come out of nowhere. They're sharp. An acute illness is an illness that was unpredictable and it came out of nowhere. But what does acute mean? It means a means not and cute means cute. It means not very cute. <laughs> So, Pitta emotions, when you're angry, we can't say you're cute, right? So, someone who's very handsome or pretty and they're cute, but when they're angry, they're not cute, they're all cute, right? So, Pitta emotions are that way, they're not cute. Kapha emotions are very cute. Oh, isn't that sort of cute, right? So, Kapha is so mild and happy go lucky that their emotions are rather cute, comparatively. Okay. So vata is unpredictable, and it runs away. Pitta is unpredictable, but it fights. It attacks. And then kapha is predictable, and it neither runs away, nor does it attack. What it does is this. It does a certain mudra. You know mudras? Mudras are gestures, right? So the kapha mudra is this mudra. When they're having emotional upset, they just go like this. So they do the chin mudra. They drop their chin down. That's called the chin mudra. And they do pranayama, you know, the alternate nostril breathing. But they do that ujjaya pranayama, the breath where they breathe a little bit through there, constricting their epiglottis. But they do it deeply with some mucus. <laughs> I'm serious. So kava people, I'm not joking. It sounds like a joke. But kava people, they literally start to snore. They shut down. So they don't want to hurt anyone like pitta. They don't want to run away from anything, because what's it to run away from? It's their home. <laughs> They're the ones who own the home. Right? Kapha is the one who has a home. And their home body. Why do you want to run away from home? Kapha's like, well, I guess they'll just go to sleep. <laughs> and they can sleep anywhere, so might as well just go to sleep. Eventually it'll blow over. The Vata storm, that's shaking up Kapha's little bit of water, right? Once the wind calls that calms down, the water's calm again. So in the meantime, they'll just go to sleep. And during sleep, they can weather out the storm and dream of eating candy, cookie, and chocolate. So hence, Kava people, they chose candy, cookie, chocolate as their favorite addictions. And you know, after you eat a lot of candy, a lot of cookie, a lot of chocolate, you want to go to sleep. Oh, I'm so full. I think I'll take a little siesta. Help me digest my meal. No, it doesn't help them digest their meal. They need to go exercise to digest their meal. It's the vatas who should take a nap after eating. But they don't. They go out jogging and jumping and trampoline. So, kapha's addictions are basically to food and to sleep. Pitta's addictions are to alcohol, especially. And work. They love work. They're addicted to being busy in achieving ways. So Pitta's addictions are related to achievement, success. They're addicted to success. And not to knock Vata, I'm not saying bad things about Vata, but you can almost say Vata's addicted to failure, right? So in other words, when Vata's way out of balance, they're like, 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's me. I'm a failure. I'm a slacker, and I'm sort of proud of it, right? So, because when people get really caught up in vata addictions, which are drugs, they become slackers. So if you smoke too much marijuana, you become a slacker. If you take too much crank methamphetamines, right, crystal meth, or too much crack, you're totally out of touch with reality. You're so fast, you're not in touch with the rest of the world. So vata is out of touch with reality, and pitta and kapha are more in touch with reality. This is, again, I'm painting gross generalizations on purpose, so you see these three categories clinically. So pitta, we said, was anger, irritability, and then pitta would also turn into rage or violence. So pitta is rage or violence. Whereas kapha is the opposite of rage or violence, it's go to sleep. Right? And then vata is not rage or violence or go to sleep, vata is insomnia. So vata people have insomnia. They don't go to sleep. So when they're emotionally shook up, they stay awake all night and drink more coffee and smoke more cigarettes and think about all their problems and never sleep. Whereas kapha, when they're out of balance, they go to sleep. So kapha, out of, out of balance, go to sleep. I'm not saying they should do that, but it's what they do. It's not a good choice. Vata, when they're out of balance emotionally, they stay awake. And when pitta is out of balance emotionally, they go to work. Oh, what the heck? So what, she divorced me. I'm just going back to my job. At least I've got my job still. Right? I've got my career. So when people are out of balance and they go back to their career for their soulless, that's pitta. When people are out of balance and they go back to their family or their home for their soulless, that's kapha. And when people are out of balance and they go to running away, either via drugs or actually via spirituality, right? So vata people, they might try to run away from the world, and they don't want to be a monk or a nun who's in the world. They want to be a monk or a nun who goes off into a cave and never sees anyone for 20 years. This is when vata is the opposite of how they normally are. Normally vata is social butterfly, loving the world, ah! But then when they go so out of balance, they briefly go catatonic, Right? They go into like child's pose, they go into fetal pose, they go catatonic, they might even fall into a brief coma, and then after that they're like, this is a crazy world, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Maybe I can go live in a cave somewhere. I wonder if there's like a hermitage where no one lives there but me. So when people go from being social butterfly to being some strange hermit who never leaves their house, it's also vata disturbance. Then when people go from being normal to being an utter, complete workaholic, working 80, 90 hours a week, rather than examine their emotional problems, that's pitta. And then when people, in response of their emotional problems, go to sleep and sleep 12, 14 hours a day, that's kapha. Out of balance. All this is, I'm not showing you the good side of it, because this is a class about Ayurvedic medicine, and medicine treats disease. Of course, we'll look at the good side, but it's more important to remove the cause. And to remove the cause, you have to know what is the disease. Vata's disease is lack of focus. So under vata put lack of focus. So vata column, they have unawareness, lack of focus. I'm sorry, not, not unawareness, but lack of focus. And at the same time, they have too much awareness. So put under vata, too much awareness. What that means is, did you hear that alarm? Uh, no? Come on, we're in a class. That, that, the siren has nothing to do with us. Here, focus on the class. So they're aware of every little sound but they're not focused. That's vata. Pitta's problem is they're so totally focused that they ignore their wife and their kids and their husband and their family. They're overly focused and they might ignore their employees. They might ignore their friends because they're so focused, focused, focused. So they're, they have focus, too much focus, but they have lack of awareness. So lack of awareness with too much focus. Again, we're showing one out of balance. And then the Kapha people, they have dullness, or laziness, dullness. Means, we can't say they're not aware, but we can't say they're aware either. If you ask them, they'll go, huh, let me think about that. 
and they look down and they have to really pull it up out of the earth and see what's going on. Because it's not like they're not paying attention. There's just a big layer of fat or a big layer of mucus or a big insulating layer of my home, my hearth, my family, right? That they're out of touch with the big picture. That's kapha imbalance, right? And hence you can't say they're really not paying attention, but they're also not paying attention and they're not paying attention, but that we can't say that they're being dull. But when they're way out of balance, they actually are dull, okay? And we can't say that they're not focused, but we can't say that they're focused. And we can't say that they're aware, but we can't say they're not aware. They're sort of like in their own little world, but not like Vata. Vata's in their own little world, but they're like not there. They're like daydreaming, not paying attention. Whereas Kalpas actually, they're like good meditators who don't know they're meditating. They just think it's sleep with their eyes open, but they're not dreaming. They're just sitting there, and they're in a fog. It's why we say brain fog. So make a note in Kapha, fog. It means you're in a fog, and you're sitting there going, What? Were you paying attention? Oh, yes, I was paying attention. What? So Vata, they really weren't paying attention. They were daydreaming, thinking of everything else. Their mind was racing with a million thoughts. What am I going to do when class is over? And Kapha is just sitting there in a dull fog. right? So dull fog is Kapha. We go brain fog. Whereas Vata, it's the opposite of that. It also seems like they're not paying attention. But in the case of Vata, they're really not paying attention. They're daydreaming. So make it out in Vata, daydreaming. So did you ever read a book where when you're reading the book, you read it and you're like, I just read that whole paragraph, where did I go? But I wasn't thinking about something else. Now Vata reads stuff, and yet they're thinking about something else, but they really read the words. And Kafa, like, they have to reread it and like, did I fall asleep then? I didn't dream, but I don't remember thinking anything, but I know, I know I read that paragraph, let's read it again. And they read it again and it didn't get through. And they have to read it again and again, and then it gets through. But then once it's stored in the earth, it's memory like an elephant. They remember it 20 years from now. So Vanta style of that is they read it, but as they're reading it, uh, they're thinking about other stuff, and they're mouthing the words, but they really weren't paying attention. They were literally multitasking, thinking about something else. And then Pitta would never do that. Pitta is very present. They love words. When they read it, they're just reading it. They're very focused. Okay. So when people are suicidal, where they actually go to the act, they try to kill themselves, that's Pitta. So suicidal, where they actually try it, it's pitta out of balance. Where people are suicidal, but they don't go to the act, they just talk about it and they go, I'm so depressed, I wish you would just kill me. Could you please kill me? I'm just too tired to kill me. I even feel too lazy to kill me, but it'd be nice to be dead. Right? That's cause of depression. And it's not really hopeless, because no one's going to kill you. You're too nice. Right? Kava people, they're very kind. Why would you want to kill a Kava person? They're so nice and kind. Now, Pitta, if Pitta asks someone to kill them, they might go, you know, I'm really thinking about it. <laughs> You're such a creep. But, I mean, I'd go to jail, so I can't kill you. You can kill yourself. <laughs> right? So, Kava people, they're very loving, kind people, compassionate. So when they get depressed, if they ever do feel suicidal, no one would kill them. <laughs> Pitta, you might think about it. I don't know. I might do it. You sure you really want me to do it? <laughs> You're such a pain in the butt. Now, Vata people, if they speak of suicide, they're not as suicidal. It's more, they're afraid of the afterlife. They think about killing themselves, and they're like, gosh, it might be worse when I die. Right? So Vata is very thinking of the future, and they're very afraid. So if they say they're going to kill themselves, Vata, it's much less likely. If Kampa says they'll kill themselves, it's not at all likely, comparatively. Come on, they're attached to their family, their home, their candy cookie chocolate. Just give them another piece of chocolate. Okay, well, I guess I'll, I'll live a little longer. You've, given, you've reminded me why I'm living on Earth. It's for chocolate. Okay? But if Pitta says they're going to kill themselves, you better intervene. You better stay with them. They're very likely to try it. And they're smart people. They'll probably succeed. Okay? So Pittas are most likely to commit suicide, and it's why when Pitta is high, they become manic. So let's now give clinical names. Manic depression is Pitta. Manic depression is Pitta, but it's where mostly it's manic. And it's why we have the word, boy, that guy, he's crazy, he's a maniac. Maniac is Pitta. And then when someone becomes an evil maniac, 
we modify the pronunciation of maniac, and what do we say? My gosh, that guy is maniacal. You've heard the word mind, maniacal. So if someone is maniacal, we use that word to describe like an evil genius maniac. That's pitta. Whereas if you're just an ordinary run-of-the-mill maniac, that's just basic pitta out of balance. But when you become evil genius pitta, we call you maniacal. Okay? Now, so there's bipolar. Bipolar is complex disease. It's vata pitta kapha disturbed. But bi means what? It's not called tripolar, it's called bipolar. There's two poles. What are the poles? Pitta is manic side, and depression is kapha side. So the manic side of bipolar is pitta. The depressive side is kapha. And what is the number one factor in kapha besides fat? It's mucus. So in Chinese medicine, and in Tibetan medicine, and in Indian medicine, Ayurveda, they speak of bipolar where the person is mostly depressed as a condition of too much mucus. There's mucus in the lungs and the heart. And I was that way. I was bipolar. I was manic depressive, but I refused to take Paxil, Zoloft, right, and all these different pharmaceuticals. So what I did is I learned Ayurveda, thank goodness, just in time, and the Dharma, and it helped me hugely. It let me transcend that disease. But I can still recreate the causes for that disease by eating cheese every day. I moved to France so I could eat cheese every day. That was the third reason. Really, I wanted to see the world, and I already spoke a little French. <clears throat> you know, and the other reason is I liked good cooking. But cheese was the subcategory of good cooking, which is really a whole third reason by itself. It's called, the French have 350 kinds of cheeses. I was in cheese heaven. Right? Not just American cheese and Swiss cheese. Right? And Velveeta. <laughs> I had everything to choose from. So when they bring out the chariot de fromage, it's a whole cheese cart. Right? And there's like two layers. And there's 40 cheeses in different plates. And they go, which would you like, monsieur? Quel fromage voulez-vous? And they go, uh, a petit peu de chat. <laughs> a little bit of each. Oh, yeah, 40 on this 40. <laughs> Just five, monsieur. Okay, this one, this one, this one, oh, this one. And I always choose the rich, slippery, slimy, stinky, gooey ones, right? I wouldn't choose the boring ones, right? Well, I had lots of bronchitis, and I had lots of depression of a bipolar nature, where I'd get manic, I could conquer the world, and then I'd get really sad and depressed. But since bipolar is a complicated disease, I'd get depressed and feel suicidal, vata, right? So vata feels suicidal, pitta would go to the act. And then kapha just gets sad. So in summary, kapha is sad, pitta is angry, and vata is panicky or freaky, or out of touch with reality. So kapha is sad, pitta is angry, and vata is like panicky. So really bipolar is pretty intense disease. It has, really it should be called tripolar from an Ayurveda perspective. Because definitely there's always, always, always vata disturbance in people with bipolar. So whenever someone says they're bipolar and they're on Zoloft and Paxil and Wellbutrin and all these things, right? You have to ask, are you more angry person? Or are you more melancholy, sad person? Or are you more anxious person? And if they say depressed or melancholy, do you mean it's hopeless? And you feel you want to commit suicide? Or do you mean, it's just sort of sad, melancholy, and you want to eat some chocolate and have some ice cream and then go to sleep? Oh, that kind. If you just want to eat some chocolate ice cream and some vanilla ice cream and a banana split and then go to sleep, then it's just melancholy. It's kapha-style sadness. Okay? If you feel angry at yourself and your, your family and your boss, and you, especially at yourself, and you couldn't conquer the world, you couldn't live up to your own standards, so Pitta is very perfectionist. With perfectionism. Pitta, everything must be just perfect. It must be lined up just so. Everything just right, just so. Right? And when it's not, which inevitably can't be just so, because it's not their own world, even though they'd like to, 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 to be their world, they want it to be them in charge of everything, because they micromanage. Pitta, micromanage, you could write. They like to control. They're control freaks. So although they'd like the world to be entirely under their control, and they act like they're the presidents of the boss or the king, and they're bossy. They boss you around. So if you know a friend or a, a spouse or a family member who's very bossy, they're definitely picked up. 
So then when people don't follow their orders and their commands and their dogma, they're like... <laughs> and they start to blame themselves. Well, oh, if I were only more knowledgeable, if I were only work harder, maybe I should put in extra hours. And then they can't live up to that. Their body's like, you can't do this anymore. <laughs> and then chemically they get imbalanced and then they get suicidal. But why? Because vata got disturbed as well. They're staying up late at night. And almost all patients with bipolar, they love to stay up till 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning. And they say, that's when I'm most creative. Well, it's true. Because vata is creative. Make a note in vata, creative. And what's the vata time of night? It's 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. So write vata, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. So vata is most creative at 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Okay? But really, pitta people should be asleep between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So in pitta, put 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. They should be asleep between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., especially by midnight maximum. Okay. So let's look at the organs that are related to vata, pitta, kapha, emotional, mental diseases. So pitta is organ that goes out of balance, that causes manic and anger and jealousy is the liver. They get too much liver fire. And the French know this. They drink alcohol, and they eat lots of foie gras de doigt, and confit de canard, and this rich goose, and duck liver pâté, and a fair amount of pork. And uh, they have a certain amount of cream sauces. And although, yes, they eat a lot of vegetables, they do have a rich diet, but they counteract it with uh, not eating so much. But to eat that rich diet, you have to drink wine. I tried to be a teetotaler in France for a few months. It didn't work if I eat what they're eating. Right? So basically, the French have an expression, Oh la la, j'ai une crise de foie. Oh la la, I have a crisis of my liver. And that's a common expression, j'ai une crise de foie. And that means I'm freaking out, I'm angry so much, I'm just sure, and my liver now hurts me. That's because of too much alcohol. So remember, Pitta's number one addiction is alcohol, and they have a crisis of the liver. And if you look at French movies, they love to argue. It's like argue, 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 kiss and make up, right? That's the heat of aversion. I hate you. And then the heat of uh, craving, I love you. No, I hate you, right? So they kiss and make up all the time. They fight. So fighting is pitta. Making up fighting in pitta. So pitta loves to fight. They never back down from a good fight. They, like, they say, hey, I like a good fight. It shows that I love you. <laughs> so I had a French girlfriend and she said, it shows I love you because I'm jealous about you. And I'm like, no, that jealousy is not love. And she said, yes, in French culture, jealousy shows I very much love you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't believe that, but if you say so. So jealousy is pitta. So jealousy is related to too much sour in your diet. So make a note pitta called jealousy and put too much sour in your diet. Whereas the liver... It's too much spicy in your diet and oily. So next to the liver, you put too much spicy and too much oily. So if you have problem with anger or manic, irritable, perfectionistic, aggressive, cut back on oily and cut back on spicy especially. If you have problem of too much jealousy, cut back on sour. That means no vinegar, no oil and vinegar dressing, no lemons. No grapefruit, no orange, no one milligram, I'm sorry, one gram of vitamin C, two gram vitamin C, if you're angry, a jealous person. So the Chinese, they have an expression, it goes, che tu, ta che tu, means he has drank vinegar. So the Chinese don't have a word for jealousy. They say, he or she has drank vinegar, right? So jealousy means drink vinegar in Chinese language. Now this shows that in Ayurveda, Tibetan, and Chinese medicine, if you have too much sour, it brings forth the emotion of jealousy. And when someone's jealous, they're like, you know, they, per they pucker up like they've just eaten a lion, right? Okay. Kapha's problem is too much sweets. You here for Ayurveda class? Oh yes. Come on in. Sit in the back or sit. Don't run in front of the camera though. So too much sweets. Kava's problem is sweets, too much sweets. So they get heavy emotion and sugar is very heavy. Okay. Now, is vinegar very heavy? Not really. It's hot in nature. And what does vinegar come from? 
Vin aigre in French. Vin, the wine, has gone aigre. It has gone spoiled. Right? So make a note under pitta, spoiled. So if people are spoiled brat, that's pitta. You could add the word brat there. So if someone's a spoiled brat, that's pitta. So being spoiled is pitta. Being bratty is pitta. And when the wine has gone spoiled, it's called vin aigre, vinegar. Right? So if you have acid belly, acid belly is pitta. Acid belly is pitta. So under pitta, write acid belly, heartburn, acid reflux, acid reflux. You know, your heart burns, but pitta might, pitta people, when vatas or kaphas talk about a pitta person, they go, my gosh, that guy, he burns me up. Right? He burns me up. He's literally setting you on fire. It's true, he burns you up. So kapha emotions are very calm and sweet and heavy and rich and sticky. So if you love someone so much that you smother them with affection, you're kapha. So if you're sticky and attached to people and you're being over-affectionate, so in kapha put over-affectionate, means sticky. If the mom is kapha and she's always being so affectionate with the vata kid, the vata is like, leave me alone, mom, stop that. Right? So vata is less affectionate. Kapha is very affectionate. And pitta is moderately affectionate. Pitta more turns affection into sexuality, into lust. Because they have so much heat. And we talk about the heat of lust, right? Whereas affection is warm, but lust is hot, right? So pitta is more hot quality. And vanta is cold, and hence literally when someone is not affectionate, nor are they lusty. So they're not interested in sex or even affection, and they're just sort of cold. That's vata. So in vata call them put cold. And we can speak of a man or a woman as being very cold emotionally. That's vata. But not only emotionally, vata has cold hands, cold feet. So under vata call them put cold hands, cold feet. And it's so beautiful language, because as a doctor, you should study language, study Chinese, study Tibetan, study French, study English, study Spanish. Doctors have to study Latin and Greek. So as Ayurvedic practitioners, we study Sanskrit, we study Tibetan, we study Chinese. So if you study language, you start to see the poetry that shows the truth of clinical cases, that shows the truth of medicine via the language. And hence we have the word, I got cold feet. Hey, you said you're going to be here yes yesterday at 4 p.m., where were you? I don't know, I got cold feet. Do you have cold hands, cold feet? Yes, I literally do. So although we have the expression, get cold feet, Vapa people, they actually get cold feet. They have cold hands, cold, cold feet. Whereas Pitta person, you touch Pitta person's hand, very warm. They have hot hands, hot feet. You know, as a prank, we let set someone's foot on fire, right? I got, I got a hot foot. Give them a hot foot. Okay. So any questions about this vata, pitta, kapha of the mind so far? So... I have a question. Mm -hmm. So is it generally people have all three, it's just different... Methods? Very good question. You know, people have all three. But one of them predominates. Like me, I'm pretty intense, right? And although I'm intense, I can be vata disturbed. Like if you asked me a question that wasn't related to this, I'd entertain your question... For quite a long time, that's vata disturbance, right? You, you, I'll, I'll do a giant parenthesis, but then my pitta will say, Vata, what are you doing? Come on, get back over here. And I'll refocus the class, even though I'll, I'll entertain something for a while as a distraction. Mm -hmm. That's why when he walked into the room, I'm like, you want to come into class? Right? Mm -hmm. So, a vata teacher, when someone comes to the door, they'd totally stop and they'd be like, they like, didn't even notice the... the in, Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So back to what were we, what were we talking about? Now I forget. Right. <laughs> so a pitta would be able to take his temporary distraction and say, "Come on in, come on in." Right. So that's pitta. And then kapha. If there was a kapha teacher sitting here, for one thing, they wouldn't be so animated. They'd be like, "So kapha is about water and earth. 
Kava has melancholy in the winter season. But Pitta, conversely, is about fire. Right? And they wouldn't even notice the guy at the door, right? Because they're, they're sort of like dull and relaxed, right? So if you ever had a teacher, I've had like chubby Kafa teacher who's like so boring and he just drones on, he's like Kafa. But also in a good way, Kafa's a drone. Kafa's the worker bee, the drone bee, right? So, so everyone has one that...